Hey YouTubers, this video is about upgrading my FZ1000 to the powerful new Super Zoom Coolpix P1000. I do a lot of nature photography. You can never be close enough to the action. And I thought this new 3000mm zoom from Nikon is going to be the most uh, extreme advantage for nature photography ever developed. Like all good modern cameras, there's many similarities. A choice of RAW and JPEG, articulated back. No touch screen on these ones though. Slow shutter speeds, fast shutter speeds, good flash, a side port for adding in a mic, uh, 4K video, and the usual built-in time-lapse filters and special effects that you find in pretty much any camera. Big difference, of course, is the zoom. More on that later. But after the zoom, these are key. The aperture has to shut down a lot to take advantage of that 24 to 3000 millimeter zoom. So F8 is the only aperture available on the P1000 when it's fully extended. It's also a beast. The FZ1000 is nearly half the weight. 3.1, close to 3.2 pounds is a lot to hang around your neck or put on a tripod. It's not really a portable one. FZ1000 manages to squeeze a beautiful little one inch sensor in there the one and two thirds sensor on the P1000, uh, when you see the size of millimeters, is really quite small when it comes to the square area for light capture. More on that later too. Of course, that reduces the resolution of the images, 16 versus 20, which is significant when it comes to editing. And that big sensor really sucks in the light for having a broader ISO range. And we'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail as well. The menu within the uh, Panasonic series is quite deep and complex, but the app works well. Whereas the menu on the Nikon one seems very simplified and terrible app. And the old F7000 is cheap at 600 versus the new Nikon P1000 at about $1,000 US. So let's uh, do a little bit of a dig into this. Spoiler alert for those that don't want to watch the whole video and all the fascinating stuff that's going to be happening. Why not upgrade? Well, one, the super zoom, you may not need that 3000. 1500 is a pretty big zoom and you can do a lot with that without all the vibration and, and stabilization. It's hard to hold a camera that big. 3.2 pounds is an enormous amount of weight around your neck and the balance point on the lens isn't, doesn't have a tripod mount. One and two thirds sensor is pretty underpowered for such a big camera. When you're at F8 zoomed out, you're gonna need all the light you can get. The menu is kind of dumbed down in terms of choices and the SnapBridge app from Nikon is very poorly designed and hard to connect to a smartphone or an iPad device. Built-in mic on the P1000 sounds kind of strangled. It has an odd tunnel-like effect. Um, and if you want to put a, a plug-in mic, it's huge. It's going to make this thing even bigger. And I'm not sure about the long haul. I think Nikon kind of is going to have second thoughts about whether they want to lose money on every one of these units they sell. Anyway, with that cheery start to this video, I'm going to review a lot more details. Let's get this moon thing out of the way. Who takes pictures of the moons anyway? Once you've got one, do you really need more than one? There's actually a button on this camera devoted right to taking pictures of the moon. Okay, 3,000 millimeters. It's a lot of moon. Fantastic. But atmospheric turbulence, tripod vibration, boring clouds. It's crazy. Look at that close-up. I can see somebody standing around there yelling, hey! Buzz Aldrin, get off of that cloud. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic, but you know, if you just take the 400 millimeter FZ1000 and you look at that, the uh, P1000, they're yeah, pretty darn close, and it's a moon. I mean, how many moon shots are you gonna get? Plus, it's the foreground to a moon that makes it more interesting. Okay, let's look at the ergonomics now. First of all, that little narrow strap that comes with it, you'll cut off the blood to your brain if you carry this thing around on your neck. Look at the size of that, it's all weight forward. The tripod mount is on the camera body. It's very hard on the tripod head to put that weight with all that carrying forward. They're very difficult to not move around. So you put the lens head on the uh, FZ1000 and you zoom it out fully extended. It's just barely even with the closed up version of the P1000. So you take the lens hood uh, from its protective state, put it on its uh, functional state on there, and then fire up that P1000 Stand back, clear the runways. Uh, this thing really goes out there. It's, it is like a telescope. It's like a love child between a telescope and a point and shoot camera. It's crazy. Anyway, when uh, FZ1000 is on wide, we're gonna look at that little red box in there and zoom in fully. Hey, there's people out there. 
Not bad. You can see a little bit of camera motion going on, even with the stabilization. If we take the P1000, see him. Uh, there's that same spot, that wide. <clears throat> really close in now. You really see how that 3000 millimeter uh, at f8 really has gotten close to the action. And uh, the stabilization is not too bad. It's on a tripod, but you can still see the vibration on a tripod. It's pretty hard to uh, stop from any type of air or ground motion. Just breathing seems to make that thing want to move around. I did a number of lens tests. I took a little corner of a shot here on, uh, on wide, um, pretty high quality on both. Uh, there's a little bit of distortion, but you know both lenses are, are very similar in terms of uh, at, at wide angle. At full zoom on the FZ1000, again, I take out a little piece, compare it to the full extended on the uh, Nikon, and actually both are, are pretty comparable. I didn't, there's a little softness on the Nikon, but it's not that bad. Start doing bird shots. Again, a dedicated button on the uh, camera for birds. FZ1000, um, native zoom is 400. It can be doubled to 800 or uh, digitally extended to 1600. It gets pretty blurry at that point, as you'd expect. P1000 and 400 equivalent to the FZ1000. It's funny, in low light, it sometimes has a hard time focusing. It just wouldn't focus on these birds. FZ1000, you know, 400 is not a bad size to catch or catch activity. You can move around and follow it pretty well. Here's the 800. Uh, internal and then 1500 the p1000 you can hand hold that this is at 2000 it's on a tripod oh, they're pretty nice images and at 3000 well, you can just smell that fish from that otter they're having a good time somebody says hey i can do that with my iphone i don't think so this iphone is fully zoomed in here and you can see that it's just no good you need to have those zooms but it's hard to follow when you get a big zoom Hand following is, is tough. You have to be zooming back out and zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, which the P1000 does, but it still has to follow the action. There's a lot of that grinding sound too when it's going back and forth. So if you want quiet audio, there's no way you're gonna get it and you're gonna hear that. The other thing is that you have to have stabilization on it to stop it from shaking, but it does that kind of holds the shot and then snaps to the next shot, then kind of holds it and snaps it. And when you watch it played back in video, it's a it's quite disturbing. Well, let's do some stills on the uh, JPEGs here and compare. If we take the FZ1400, double the internal uh, zoom, and then use the digital zoom to 1600, let's compare that against the native zooms on the P1000. When we zoom right into 3000, <clears throat> it's quite a close look. But you know, if, we, if I do the blown up FZ1000 against the P1000, it's pretty close. FZ1000 does nice high speed, 120 feet per second at 1080p. Uh, it's a beautiful image, really slows it down nicely. Unfortunately, the P1000 only does 60 frames per second at 1080p. Still a nice look, but it's not really slow speed. And that built-in uh, mic sound, it's so weird. It just doesn't capture sound. Both cameras do great time-lapse photography. The P1000 has a series of choices that automatically does the movie for you, whereas the FZ1000, you pick the interval, you pick the number of frames, and you let it go, and it builds the movie in camera. It does a great job. The uh, macro is amazing on the P1000. It can focus as close as one centimeter. Um, does pretty good shots. It uh, Fill and flash helps a lot uh, on those pictures there. The menu on the Lumix is quite complex. There's a lot of choices, a lot of deep dives into customization. It can be a bit intimidating and confusing initially, but there's lots of ways to go through it and, and set it up for yourself and customize the choices. And uh, some of the things are quite nice to set up. The sound on the beep is good. Uh, I like a little quiet one. I don't like a loud one. And uh, there's choices for all that. And that's typical of all these menu settings. You can kind of make it as simple or as complex as you want but uh, it really does customize the camera to um, how you want it to set up. The menu on the P1000, on the other hand, is ridiculously simple. Uh, a nice compliment to the menu on the Lumix is the smartphone app provided by Panasonic. It quickly connects to the phone. Either a smartphone or an iPad can be used. It provides a nice big live view display. The telephoto is smooth and there's numerous settings that can be adjusted on the screen as well. I'm showing white balance here. 
you can adjust ISO. Of course, this is dependent on what setting you have the camera set on mechanically, whether it's aperture, shutter, video, etc. It's nice having you know, the exposure control adjustments. You may want to be highlighting the sh shadows or bringing down the sky. That's all can done. You can change the type of file, whether it's RAW or JPEG, and shoot video or stills. The SnapBridge app that comes with the camera is a very unreliable and awkward to use. It took me hours to link up between my camera and the smartphone. Even though it says Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are both usable, only Wi-Fi works if you actually want to control the camera. The Bluetooth is only for downloading the 2 megapixel images that um, it will send if you request them. It asks you if you want to have a live view, which is crazy because the whole purpose of having a remote control is to have a view of what your camera is seeing. It's got very limited functionality. You can't adjust speed, ISO, aperture. The telephoto is quite jerky. It does eventually focus when uh, it's locked into a, a subject, so that's something. But there's no video switch. So it really it's it's the worst app I think I've ever seen for a camera. It's crazy for a video camera. It has no video switch. There's a nice soft focus, uh, three thousand millimeter zoom in photo. So Snapridge is terrible. Panasonic's one inch sensor allows you to capture low light conditions quite nicely, up to uh, twenty five thousand ISO. P one thousand's one and two third inch sensor is a little more struggling in low light and really effectively only gets up to about thirty two hundred ISO without introducing too much noise. We're looking at that little dome. I've blown it up, and uh, in these images, it's actually not bad. We managed to get up to about uh, sixteen hundred to thirty two hundred ISO before we start seeing some significant noise showing up in there. I was a little bothered by its lack of sharpness, uh, fully zoomed in. But um, that just might be that the tripod couldn't handle a little bit of vibration that was going on in the, in the image. But overall, actually, the low light wasn't as bad as I thought. It handles video better. Um, one of the things about that uh, small sensor is that it doesn't handle shadow detail. You're seeing a lot of contrast here. But zooming in on that archway, I was very impressed, actually, by its ability to still pull out a lot of detail. Now, watch how really zoomed in we were there. It's quite amazing. This zoom, when it's working well, it really blows my mind. But I can't figure out sometimes why it won't focus and sometimes when it will. Just that low contrast throws it. Here's my final thoughts on this camera. If you want it, you better buy it. In fact, I bought one, but I'm sending it back. And this is why. It's a, it may never be backed up with future software updates. Even though it's a phenomenal lens, the sound, the ergonomics, no touch screen, the dumbed down menu items, the crappy snapbridge those are real deal breakers to me. The oddball odd features like that stupid moon button and a bird button. It's just, this could be a very great camera, but they tried to be too much of too many things. It's got an amazing macro, one centimeter focus. It has a great wide angle. The Super Zoom 3000 blows my mind. It's all crazy. And yet, do you need that much? 3000, I don't know, beyond 1500? Vibration and stabilization are pretty hard to do. And I think you'd be better off having a one inch sensor than getting by with that little crappy one and two thirds one. So unfortunately, that camera's going home back to the to the dealer. Thanks for hanging in there. I hope this helps you and it sure wasn't what I thought it would be when I started it. Thanks for tuning in.